From above, Ningaloo Reef looks untouched and full of life. But if you look closer, you'll see its corals are reaching a boiling point. The whole northwestern shelf of Western Australia has been impacted by a heat stress event in the early summer months of 2025. It does feel like sometimes we're in this perfect place with the perfect reef and it's kind of a bit of a wake up call for a lot of people. Climate change and coral bleaching are really insidious and really has devastating long-term impacts on, on corals, even if they don't die outright. Ningaloo Reef is a World Heritage Site located off the northwest coast of Western Australia. I don't think it's very well known globally, like given how incredible this place is. Obviously you've got the marine ecosystem that's insane and then you've got the gulf which is different again and the range. It's kind of a mecca of wilderness. This is my favourite place and it's the most beautifully wild place with the most marine life. But that life is now under threat. So we've joined forces with our partners to better understand the problem. So we're here in Exmouth working with Minjuru to look at the distribution and abundance of corals on Ningaloo Reef and the Muron Islands. Our trip here is coincided with a very large heat stress event. So our project has evolved to now incorporate looking at the health of colonies. So we'll be doing um, replicated belt transects at around the 10 to 12 metre depth zone. So diving for 60 minutes. So along those belt transects, I'm surveying a one metre wide belt replicated three times. And I'll be identifying and counting every species of hard coral that I encounter on the belt. And also making a judgment call on whether they're wholly fully bleached partially bleached or healthy. So it's a distribution, abundance and health survey along belt transit. Back on land, the team analyzes their findings at our Exmouth Research Lab. It looks like there certainly is bleaching impacts on the reef. So this is mostly visualized by corals being white. Sometimes they fluoresce before they turn white. So they can be really bright colors. Both of those situations are the coral signaling that it's really stressed, it's not happy. Some colonies, a coral called Seriatopora, some people might know it as a needle coral, is very severely, severely impacted. Whole colony bleaching. Right now I'm seeing some of those colonies are starting to be overgrown by algae, indicating that they are dying. So it's not good for the Seriatoporas. One of the most consequential long-term effects is on coral reproduction. So obviously um, how corals reproduce every year, that's what we um, call coral spawning. And that's really the time for growth and regeneration of the reef. And we know that warming and the stress that warming causes to corals can actually um, decrease the amount of reproduction. It can change the timing of the reproduction so you're less likely to have things like fertilization. So there's a really a lot of downscale effects. The big question here is, will these stressed corals still spawn? For locals, the bleaching isn't just environmental, it's personal. People that haven't been here before may not notice it so much because for us, we're so used to seeing such a perfect reef. In the beginning, we're like, oh, you know, we always get hot water in summertime and we've had these events before, but then there's quite a few people that have been here for a very long time that are saying, we haven't had this bleaching event before to this extent. And I think it's kind of a bit of a wake up call for a lot of people. A lot of my friends that care so much about the reef were really heartbroken. And for us as locals, it's kind of a stark reminder that we're not a bubble from what's affecting the rest of the world. I think it does feel like sometimes we're in this perfect place with like the perfect reef and marine wildlife and we can't be touched. And I think this heat wave, marine heat wave and bleaching event and cyclones has kind of reminded all of us that, you know, we really have to take action with climate protection. Does this mean climate change is to blame for this marine heat wave? What we knew was going to happen has happened. So it was never a matter of if Ningaloo would bleach, but it was a matter of when Ningaloo would bleach. And that's because 2024 has really showed us that reefs around the world have been bleaching. So we've 
literally just gotten out of the fourth mass global coral bleaching event. So it was really just a matter of when. But this really makes coral reefs one of the canaries in the coal mine when it comes to how ecosystems are responding and will continue to respond to climate change pressures that are currently unfolding. We really need countrywide and international support to protect this because I think the greatest threats to our region and Ningaloo are global warming, climate change, increase in water temperature because all of those things are what's affecting us and affecting the reef. It's not too late to do something on climate change. Every point one of a degree matters for reefs. So any kind of action we do now, we do tomorrow, will be positive for reefs. So that should be a, a, a real sign to get out there and make your voice heard for nature. So can the reef recover? And will this spawning season offer a lifeline? So corals have a, this amazing potential to bounce back if they're given an opportunity. So that's what we need to be watching now. We need some clear years without heat impacts, without deoxygenation events, without cyclones. We need some less stress on the reef to enable these little juveniles to grow up to sub-adults and then to make it all the way to adulthood. While there are some stressed corals, definitely, there's still a lot of healthy corals out there and some of those corals are jam-packed full of eggs. So this is really good news for the future of the reef because this is what we really need to be able to have healthy reproducing adults that can provide those next generations that will come in and colonise any new space that becomes available from corals that die during this bleaching event. For me, that's an amazing you know, new start for the reef is obviously you've got bleached coral, but it's still able to spawn. So that gives me a lot of hope that maybe a lot of the bleached coral isn't gonna completely die and it might come back. It is quite resilient in some areas. So there are always signs of hope when it comes to the reef. And we recently heard that there has been wonderful reports of coral spawning happening along the Ningaloo. So that means even in this time of crisis, even during this time of sickness, the corals are able to reproduce and hopefully begin that next generation. And I'm also hopeful that this will inspire people to raise their voice up for the reef and that there has never been a more critical time to fight for nature, care for nature, and protect nature than right now. Through science, advocacy, and action, there's hope we can keep our reefs and their future in focus.